This is a famous photograph of the first successful airplane flight. And in this picture, we see the Wright brothers. This is Orville Wright lying in the center of the craft piloting it, and Wilbur Wright running alongside. In this picture, the airplane is flying to the right and away from the camera. So this mechanism that you see out here is actually on the front of the airplane, and that is what was used to steer the plane up and down. In the back, you can see two rudders, and those were used to turn the plane left and right. And in the middle, there was a small engine, and belts connected it to two pulleys to turn to propellers. And in the picture, you can see faintly the blur of the propellers spinning. The propellers were actually on the back of the plane and pushed it forward. And I also want you to look here at the end of the wing. If you look closely, you can see the shape of the wing and see that it has some curvature to it. And that's important, and we'll come back to that later. This photo was taken on December 17, 1903, and this right here was an historic moment. This was a milestone in the history of aviation. In the picture, you can see that the plane is only a few feet off the ground, but it is under control and flying under its own power. Now this first flight was rather short. It only lasted about 12 seconds, and the plane only flew about 120 feet. And it's often remarked that the entire length of the first flight was shorter than the wingspan of a modern airliner. And while that's true, they took that aircraft up additional times that same day. And on the fourth and final flight that day, it was in the air for 59 seconds and flew 852 feet. And then they continued to improve the aircraft. Less than one year after the initial flight, they had built a second plane, and this photo was taken during a five-minute flight that covered two and three-quarter miles. And less than one year after that, they had built a third plane. And in this picture, the plane is on a flight that lasted over 30 minutes, and in which the plane traveled over 20 miles. The original aircraft that made the historic first flight is now hanging in the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., now, these flights by the Wright brothers were not the first flights by humans. People had flown before in balloons and in gliders, but there are certain characteristics of this flight which make it notable as the first successful airplane flight. And specifically, this was powered flight. The, the Wright brothers had built a plane that could take off and even gain altitude under its own power. And it was sustained flight. It wasn't simply coasting like a glider, which would eventually lose speed or altitude. And it was controlled flight. Unlike the flight of a balloon, which could be blown in any direction by the wind, this plane could be flown and the pilot had control over the direction of the aircraft. Now this type of flight, human flight in a powered, sustained, controlled manner in a heavier than aircraft, had been a goal for a long time. Back in the 1400s, Leonardo da Vinci had tried to design flying machines. And even going back before that, back to ancient times, in the, in the Greek myths, we can read of the story of Icarus. He wished he could fly, and his father, according to the legend, attached feathers to his arms with wax, and that allowed him to fly by flapping his arms. And in his excitement, Icarus flew too close to the sun, and the sun melted the wax, holding the feathers in place, and he fell to his death into the sea. At least that's how the story goes. Now the point here is that this story is ancient. For a long time, people had wished that they could take to the sky. And ever since ancient times, people knew that it was possible. It was always known that sustained flight in a heavier-than-air object was achievable. And the reason people knew that is because that is exactly the type of flight that birds achieve. Birds fly, obviously, under their own power, and they can sustain that flight, and they have control of their direction and, to a large extent, of their speed and their altitude. And they're flying under their own power. They're not floating. Birds are inherently very lightweight, but they don't rise into the air because they're buoyant like balloons. They stay aloft under their own power. And this type of manned flight, powered, sustained, and controlled, 
in a heavier than aircraft is exactly what the Wright brothers achieved. Here's a picture of the Wright brothers. This is Orville Wright on the left and Wilbur on the right. And these men were extremely innovative. They actually started out building bicycles and they had a lot of mechanical skill and they decided to apply their minds and their efforts to the design and construction of a machine that could fly. And in doing so, there were a lot of problems to solve, and they tackled all of them. For example, they designed their own propellers, and propeller design is a very difficult problem. And the propellers they produced are actually very efficient, nearly as efficient as the best modern propellers. They needed an engine, for their airplane and it had to be powerful and still be lightweight and they approached several engine manufacturers asking for help but nobody was interested in their project building a flying machine seemed to most people to be something in the realm of science fiction or something that wasn't possible and they had trouble getting people to take them seriously so they ended up designing and building their own engine they also built a wind tunnel which they would use to do experiments with and they did tests on the the effects of different shapes in the wind tunnel and different wing designs and they did all of this with their own money I think it's interesting that at the same time that they were working on their aircraft there was also a government project underway to try to build a flying machine and a lot of taxpayer money was wasted on the government project in fact it was around fifty thousand dollars which by today's standards would be worth millions of dollars and that airplane never flew the project was a failure the Wright brothers on the other hand designed and built their first aircraft for only one thousand dollars which was a tiny fraction of the cost of the failed government project and they didn't spend any taxpayer money doing it here's a picture of the engine that they built to keep the weight down it was made of aluminum and that was not a common practice in those days and this engine actually has some important similarities to modern fuel injected engines the Wright brothers along with the mechanic from their bicycle shop a man named Charlie Taylor these three men designed and built this engine in six weeks and it worked here's a picture of an early glider you can see there's no engine on this craft and no propeller this was taken a year or two before the first flight the Wright brothers used a lot of gliders to experiment with different wing designs and here are two pictures of some tests of some early gliders in both of these pictures the gliders are being lifted by the wind and the men are holding the gliders in place with ropes and these two pictures make an important comparison in both of these pictures the wind is coming from the left and in both cases lift is being generated and the glider is lifting into the air now look at the picture on the left this is the the front of the glider over here and the back over here so you could imagine the glider moving into the wind in this direction or the wind hitting the glider in this direction now in this picture note that the wings are basically flat you can actually see some structural detail on the wings but the wings are basically flat but the glider is tilted at an angle these wings strike the wind at an angle and that angle is sometimes called the angle of attack and as a result of that the air gets deflected down so you could imagine the wind hitting the wing and deflecting down and this is basic physics this is Newton's third law if the wing pushes the air down then the air pushes the wing up and so lift is generated and that lift is sufficient to keep it aloft however a lot of drag is generated in the process too aerodynamic friction is referred to as drag and the wind creates a lot of force toward the rear which means it would require a lot of forward force to move the plane through the air now if you look closely at the picture right along here you can see the rope that these guys are using to hold it in place and the angle of that rope tells us a lot about the forces involved to hold the glider in place these guys are pulling on the rope in this direction 
which means the rope is pulling on them in this direction. And that arrow right there tells us something about the lift and the drag. If we imagine the vertical component of this vector, that would represent the lift generated by this glider. And the horizontal component tells us about the drag toward the rear. So you would need that much forward force to move the plane through the air in order to get that much lift. Okay, with that in mind, look at the second picture. In this picture, the key difference is that the wings are curved. There's some curvature to the wings. And if you look at the detail on the structure of the wings here, if you look closely, you can see curvature on the wings. This is a much more efficient wing design. And again, you can look at the ropes that these guys are using to hold the glider in place. These ropes run, this guy's holding a rope right here, and this other guy's holding a rope that runs right along here. These guys are pulling almost straight down in order to hold the glider in place. And that means that the force produced by those wings is almost straight up. There is a lot of lift and very little drag. And that is one of the characteristics of this wing that allowed the Wright brothers to make a successful flight. Now the curved shape generates more lift and exactly why that works is what we will discuss next.